In this video, I will show you how you can run macOS applications almost natively on Linux. This video is not about virtual machines and it's definitely not about running full macOS on top of Linux. Instead, we will take a look at an open source compatibility layer which enables you to run macOS applications on Linux without virtualization. The project is called Darling. I will show you how you can set it up. We will run a few applications and I will give you my opinion about it. Now, before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev, or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe, and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there at the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. As you can tell, this is the Darling website. It says that Darling is a translation layer that lets you run macOS software on Linux. It is fast, because it doesn't use virtualization. It's free, because it's open source. It's compatible, because you get a complete Darwin environment. It's also easy to use. And it's native. This is more regarding the Linux desktop experience, but if you ask me if it's not virtualized, then it's basically running natively as well. Now, you probably heard all of that before, because this sounds a lot like Wine. And it is, because Wine is also a compatibility layer for Windows applications on Linux. So Darling is basically Wine for macOS applications. In a previous video, I showed you how you can use Wine to run Windows applications and Windows games on Linux. I also did a Windows versus Linux gaming performance comparison. So if you want to know how to set up Wine for gaming or you just want to see the comparison, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Now one interesting thing, the name Darlink is actually a combination of Darwin and Linux. Darwin is the core operating system of macOS, and Darling actually uses parts of it. Does it violate the Apple's end-user license agreement? No, because Darling only uses parts of Darwin that are released as fully free software. So only the open source parts are actually used. Also, very important to mention, does Darling support GUI apps? Almost. It has basic experimental support for running simple graphical applications. So don't expect from this too much. Most applications that I have tried actually didn't work. Command line applications are okay, but everything else, not so. Now without further ado, let's see how to install this one. Down here, you will find a link to the GitHub page. Now go to latest release. As you can see, this one is a bit older. If we go to releases, we can see that there are also more recent testing releases. So if you want to install one of those, go to Assets. If you're using Ubuntu, you can just download the dev package and install it. In case you're not using Ubuntu, you will need to build it from source. And that's also what I will do. Here is the link to the documentation. Now first, you need to download the dependencies for your distribution. So let's open the terminal. Now, by the way, the Linux distribution that I'm using here is called PearOS Thick Sur. In a previous video, I showed you how you can install a macOS lookalike named PearOS on a USB drive. So if you want to run a macOS-like Linux distro from a USB drive yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Now, since PearOS is a Mac-like Linux distro, it makes sense that this one also runs macOS applications. So let's install Darling on this one. I will clear the terminal. And let's dock this to the left and this to the right. PearOS is based on Ubuntu 22.04. Here it is. Let's copy the instructions and let's paste it here. Perfect. Now, we need to get the source code. It says Darling uses kit LFS, so let's set this up. Here are the instructions. Again, I'm using Ubuntu, so let's execute those. Copy and paste. Now let's do sudo apt-get update. 
and sudo apt get install git lfs and now git lfs install git lfs initialized now let's clear the terminal and back to the instructions now we need to clone the repository so let's copy that and let's paste it here just execute this one and this will download about 5 gigabytes of data now i already cloned the repository so i will skip this step and i will just enter inside the repository cd darling the cloned repository looks like this this is the content and you should see something like this as well now i will update the source so let's copy all of that updated git hooks then git pull already up to date and let's do git sub module update perfect and now let's build the source it says the build may require up to 16 gigabytes of disk space so be prepared but the final installation itself then takes up to one gigabyte so this is good first go inside the repository i already did that then let's remove our link in case it's already installed uninstall complete now let's create the builds directory and let's go inside it i already have the build folder here so i will just go inside of it and now let's do cmake dot dot this will configure the build configured make dash j8 this will use eight build threads just to speed up the build process and enter build now this can take some time finally build completed and this took more than 60 minutes now we need to install it so sudo make install let's do it excellent darling is installed now let's see what we can do with it i will clear the terminal let's follow the documentation here we have the sections the next one is darling shell it says the shell is the primary way how to use darling and you start it by executing darling shell so let's do it darling shell and we are inside this now created a darling prefix inside my home folder similar as wine does for windows applications now let's see what we can do here let's see what to try let's try uname this should give us the kernel so uname dash a yes this is the darwin kernel version 20.6 let's try out software version product name mac os product version 11.7 .7, which is i think big sur and the built version is darling what else can we do we can explore the file system this is what you get with the prefix my linux home folder is mounted under slash volumes slash system root then we can inspect binaries explore memory layout check out mounts list running processes let's check this out we get unimplemented system calls all right and then here we can see the running processes although it looks like they are trimmed okay we can read the manual run python scripts trace a process control services fetch web pages try out sudo use a package manager install homebrew this is interesting you can install homebrew and also install packages with it but as far as i have tested homebrew gets stuck very easily especially if you try to install multiple packages at once it just gets stuck so it should work but don't expect too much from it then we can install pkg packages this is interesting we can attach a dmg disk then run neofetch let's try this one out here is the script i want raw now let's copy the link and let's do curl fssl and the link and put this into the neofetch dot sh script now let's run the script bash neofetch.sh and here it is so it thinks that this is mac os big sur 11.7 very nice and finally 
If you have Xcode SDK installed, you can compile and run programs. The whole compiler stack works. How cool is that? I agree, that's awesome. You have a simple C example and a Swift example. This is all nice, but let's try some GUI apps, non-working software. So Homebrew works, Xcode command line tools work, GNU plot works, Python 3, and Eden Math, scientific calculator. This sounds like it has a GUI. Here is the link. Yes, so this is how it looks like. Let's download it. It is a DMG disk. So let's attach this one. HDUtil, attach, and the path to the image. It's mounted under volumes Eden Math. So let's run it. Volumes macOS Eden Math. And here it is. Does it work? I'm not sure. So the GUI seems to work. 2 plus 2 equals nothing. Am I too dumb to use the calculator? About? It looks like it doesn't work. Let's try something else. Known partially working software. Classic Finder. Let's try that one. Download. Let's unzip it. Extract here. And let's run it. Classic Finder. This is it. And it's lagging like crazy. Let's try users. My user. Okay. It has the following bugs. No menu bar. Windows cannot be closed after they lose focus. Sometimes does not respond and runs very slowly. I think we found all the bugs. I have to terminate this one. Then we have something that I'm very excited about, and that's .NET, the command line compiler. Very minimal Hello World applications compile and run. Running .NET applications is something that I definitely want to try out on Darling. If you're excited like me about .NET, then stay tuned for my next video. Then we also have things that don't work. For instance, Xquartz, Macports, Python 3.10. Most GUI toolkits don't work, like Python toolkits, WX Python, WX Widgets, Xamarin and MAUI, Mac Catalyst, Xcode GUI doesn't work, Logic, Final Cut Pro, Adobe Suite applications, or any complex GUI applications in general. Only simple Hello World type GUIs will work. So basically forget about any GUI applications on Darling. It looks like that the only thing that you can do currently on Darling is execute scripts or to use it as kind of a built environment for your macOS applications, maybe even iOS applications, but I'm not sure, I would have to try it out. At this state as it is, it's very far from what Wine does for Windows applications. But anyways, I find it awesome that we can run even a small subset of macOS applications on Linux. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. Did you know that Darwin, the core macOS operating system, is based on FreeBSD? In a previous video, I showed you how you can install FreeBSD on a USB drive the right way. So if you want to run FreeBSD from a USB drive yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks, so you can buy me a coffee for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.